In this lesson, we'll start to talk about a concept called attribution, another way in which we think socially. And attribution are attributions are inferences we make about the causes of behavior. In other words, it's how we explain behavior. And this can be both our own behavior and other people's behavior as well. So in general, we might see someone do something and we ask ourselves, why did that person do that? Why did he do X? Why did she do Y? And the answers we come up with as the cause is what's known as attribution. We attribute the behavior to some cause. And in the history of social psychology, many people have proposed attribution theories. And these theories are namely about or directly tied to theories about how people explain behavior, not how people should explain behavior. So it's not the case that these theories are giving us insight into the real causes of people's behavior. Instead, what these theories tell us is when you're faced with that question of why did someone do something, how do you come up with the answer? What are you likely to think is the answer to the question rather than what the actual answer is? In general, a lot of the research has looked at two basic forms of attribution or two kinds of attributions you might draw about a behavior. One of them is a dispositional attribution, or sometimes referred to as an internal attribution. And this is when you explain a person's behavior as being caused by internal characteristics or something about the person. When you see a behavior and you draw a dispositional attribution, what you're doing is saying that that person did this thing because of some quality of that person. So as an example, you see someone going bowling, as you can see in this image here. The behavior here is a man is bowling, and the question you're asking is, why is he doing this? If you draw a dispositional attribution, what you're doing is you're saying, well, he's a guy who likes bowling, for example. Something about that person and the qualities of this individual person is the reason for the behavior taking place. In this case, it's that this person likes to do it. It's his opinion of the activity. You can also, however, draw situational attributions, or sometimes called external attributions. And in this case, what you're doing is you're saying that some behavior reflects external circumstances, that the behavior is being caused by something about the situation, not anything under the individual's control, not anything about the person, him or herself, but something external to the person has influenced this behavior to take place. You might consider the same example of a man going bowling, and in the former case of a dispositional attribution, we explained the behavior by something about him, that he likes bowling. But if you were instead to draw a situational attribution, what you would be doing is you might say, well, his friends made him go bowling tonight. He has friends who want to go bowling, and they made him engage in this activity. Now the explanation is very different, and it has little to do with how we're judging the person, and rather how we view that person's situation. Imagine uh, an example where you're driving safely down the road, and someone swerves into your lane. Here's another behavior that you would want to explain and draw an attribution for the behavior. If you draw a dispositional attribution for this behavior, you might go, well, what a jerk. That guy is so reckless. Here's something about the person himself that caused him to swerve out in front of me. If you instead drew a situational attribution, what you might do is say, wow, there's a kid who would have gotten hit if that person didn't swerve out of the way. Now it's not that the person himself is reckless. Now it's a case of the person responding to situational pressures. So hopefully you can see the difference between these two kinds of attributions and how they really distinctly change how you interpret a situation or interpret someone's behavior. The question is, when are people going to draw one or the other? Well, in general, overall, what's known as the fundamental attribution error has documented a case in which people tend to overestimate the impact of dispositional influences and underestimate the impact of situational influences. So in general, people are more likely to make a dispositional attribution than to look for things in the situation that could have caused the very same behavior. 
Let's take a look at one way in which we've found the fundamental attribution error to be true. In an early study by Jones and Harris, they had participants read essays that argue for or against Fidel Castro. This is at a time where this topic was really salient, really important. What they manipulated in this study was whether they uh, gave the impression that the author of this essay chose which side to take or was required to take a particular side. Here's a case in which you either have a clear dispositional attribution that the person chose and reflected something about him or herself, or you're given a very clear situational explanation that someone else made them take a position. And the question they asked everyone afterward was, how much does the author actually like Fidel Castro? So you're reading an essay written by someone, and you want to understand, well, given that this essay is arguing in favor or against Fidel Castro, do I think that the author, him or herself, really truly has the same opinion that's reflected in the essay? So if people were rational, here's the kind of pattern that we might expect. When you know that the person had a choice over which position to take, then you should use the essay and the behavior as an indication of this internal characteristic. So if the essay was arguing in favor, you should draw the attribution that this person did so because it's something about his own opinions in the case of uh, knowing there was a choice. But if the essay was arguing against Fidel Castro, you might instead go, oh, this is a person who doesn't like Castro, because after all, he chose which side to take. However, in the no-choice condition, the topic of the essay should have little to do with what you think the person really thinks. If the essay is in favor or against, it shouldn't affect what you think the person's real opinion is, because you've been told that the person had no say over which position to take. It's really an irrelevant predictor of the person's real opinion. But here's what they actually find. It is the case that under conditions of choice, people draw dispositional attributions. But when people know that the author of the essay had no choice over which position to take, they still took the behavior reflected in the position in the essay to reflect an internal characteristic of the author. They used the essay position to judge the actual author's opinion rather than ignore that information, which is what they should have done if they drew a situational attribution. So what we see is that people make dispositional attributions, even when there's a clear situational influence that could explain the very same behavior. You might see this uh, reflected in people's interpretations of various actors who have been known for distinctive roles. So on the left here, Leonard Nimoy playing the character of Spock. People may come to really think Leonard Nimoy is Spock-like, knowing full well that he was reading lines written in a script. And it wasn't really about himself in the storyline. And yet, people are judging the actor based on the character even though it's a clear case of a situational influence. So overall, what we've seen here today is that we're quick to attribute people's choices to something about them, rather than consider the influence that external factors could have played.